Hey gang, it's that time of year again. The time of year where I've bought something that I want to share with you because I find it just that exciting. And also, I'm going away so I kind of need a video that I can produce a little bit quicker than usual. As the title suggests today, I'm going to be talking about this thing. A one wheel. Specifically, a one wheel Pint X. And if you don't know what a one wheel is, or what it does, well... That. I've had this thing for just over a month and already I've clocked over 200 kilometers and I have to say I've absolutely loved every single second apart from the ones where I fell off. They kind of hurt a little bit. Now I'm obviously not one of the first people to gush about how amazing these things are so I'm not going to talk about that today. What I'm instead going to talk about is five things I wish I knew before I got myself my very own one wheel. So first up if you're talking one wheels you are also talking one wheel accessories and this is a very hotly debated topic some people ride them raw dog straight out of the box no modifications needed and some people spend more time fiddling around and modifying them and tuning them to just how they like to ride them more than they actually do riding them it's kind of like modding skyrim that becomes the game rather than actually playing the game i haven't done anything too drastic myself but there are a couple of optional accessories that i would consider pretty essential hence the air quotes first up we have the fender as cool as it looks to glance down and see the wheel spinning away, it's still a wheel and anything it runs over like dirt, rocks, leaves or something a little bit more gross will sometimes get stuck to that wheel and be thrown upwards and the only thing it will come into contact with is you. This means you'll get covered in whatever you're running over which isn't great for the cleanliness of your clothing or your general safety since these foot pads can be extremely easy to slip off of if you can't get a solid foot down on them. Now yes, if you're flipping your wheel over doing loads of tricks then you'll probably be breaking fenders a lot more than you'll be getting the benefit out of them but when you're just starting out, you're not exactly going to be doing ridiculous wheel flips and all sorts of things. So running with a fender will be an easy way to keep yourself clean and also keep yourself steadily on the board. Which when you're getting started, I think safety should be your number one priority. The second accessory that I think is basically essential are these charger plugs. These tiny bits of plastic slot into your charge port when you're not using it for charging and protects it from dirt, debris, water and anything else that could get in there and cause some damage. Running around without one of these is basically rolling the dice that hopefully nothing will get inside there and mess things up. And personally, I'd rather not take that gamble. These things aren't cheap and can only be officially repaired in California. And I don't know if you can tell, I don't live in California. So the shipping for that would be pretty insane. One thing to know about these things, you can lose them pretty easily. If you take a big spill and your board rolls quite a lot, they can pretty easily fly out of the charging socket and get lost. So if you have a particularly nasty spill, just glance down. If you can see the little nodule poking out and it's still in there, you're all good. If not, just have a little look around and see if you can find it. I had my first one for a whole one day before I lost it. So uh, yeah, lesson learned check every time you fall off. I wouldn't consider this third one essential, but it is pretty nice to have. Rail guards. Rail guards sit on the sides of the board and protect the metal rails from any damage. Now the rails themselves are there to protect the internals of the board from damage as well as keep the board straight. This is kind of like putting sun cream on top of a hoodie, but if you really care about keeping your stuff looking nice or ever want to sell your wheel, you want to grab some of these sooner rather than later. I got some later on and my rails underneath have some pretty tasty scratches, which I don't actually mind since I like this thing to look like I use it, but if it bothers you, you should keep them protected. And an accessory which, thankfully, you will almost certainly already have a phone. With the app on it, obviously. Now, yes, the app isn't technically needed to ride at a one wheel since they can happily just get moving straight out of the box with no tweaking. But to get the most out of your wheel, downloading and connecting to the app is the way to go. Not only does it allow you to switch between the different riding profiles, which can make it a whole lot easier to ride in specific conditions, it also logs all kinds of stats about your wheel, like ride data, top speed, total distance, and much, much more. Eventually, you'll probably stop caring about the stats and logging every ride, but I still enjoy it and the profiles still make this an essential pickup for any one wheel owner. Also, if you own an Apple Watch, there is an app that connects to your phone, to the wheel, and tells you your battery level, your total distance of the trip, your current speed and all sorts. Also allows you to switch on and off the lights as well as change profiles. When I'm riding, I rotate my watch to the inside of my wrist so I can glance down, see my speed, see my charge, see how far I've gone, and change profiles if I really need to. This is especially useful since I like to ride with my phone in my backpack to keep it a little bit safer, so it's great for switching profiles on the fly and making sure everything is running smoothly. Speaking of things in my backpack, I highly recommend you get a pack of some essentials to take with you on every single ride. Not only will these things come in useful in an emergency, but having a backpack is never a bad thing. Say you want to run to the shops and you don't want to drive or you don't want to walk, take the wheel, put your shopping in there, you're all sorted. I especially recommend putting anything valuable like your phone or your keys into your backpack. Not only could you fall off and lose them or break them, you could also injure yourself if you have keys in your pocket and you fall off onto those keys, you could stab yourself in the leg and there's a lot of important stuff in there. But aside from my phone and keys, I also have a number of other items inside of this bag. I have a mini first aid kit, I haven't actually used this yet, but it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Now if I break my collarbone, as is the one wheel tradition, it's not like I can perform field surgery on myself, but if I fall off and cut myself and I'm actively bleeding a little bit, 
and still have a ways to go to get home, it's nice to be able to disinfect the wound and cover it with a bandage or plaster until I get home. If nothing else, it stops me from bleeding onto my clothes, which is always a great thing since stains don't really clean so easily. You also have a micro pump and an electric pressure gauge. Bonus tip, as soon as you get your wheel, check the pressure. I rode mine before I checked, and when I eventually did, I found out it was at like 8 psi. For reference, I believe the general advice is somewhere close to 20 with a little less if you're into off-road, but 8 is still pretty damn low no matter what. I don't check every day, but before going on a longer ride or once per week is good to keep myself safe, and the micro pump will sort me out in a pinch if I need to top up halfway around after a puncture. If you're looking to get a precise PSI without lots of trial and error, an electric pump with a readout will still be the way to go. I have one of these in my car, but if you don't have a car to plug into, you can get plenty of electric pumps that plug straight into the wall or even have batteries. But carrying one of those around my backpack would be kind of heavy, so I'm not really bothered for that. I don't actually have this one on me since it's out of stock and my order hasn't arrived yet, but a puncture kit is highly recommended. These tyres are super tough and can self-seal from a lot of minor things, but stuff like nails will cause a big problem, so these repair kits will come in clutch should the worst happen. I also have a bike lock if I need to leave the wheel unattended for any length of time. These things cost the same as like a graphics card, and you won't exactly just leave that sat on the street while you nipped into the shops. So lock it up anytime that you leave it alone, anywhere where you can't keep a direct eye on it at all times. I thread it through the rail, and boom, it's locked up safe while I shop. There are locks made specifically for the one wheel, but this one works fine just for me. Plus, super cheap. Other than that, some sort of selfie or action camera is a great idea if you want to take pictures or videos of yourself with your sick new toy. But that's not essential unless you're, well, a narcissist or me. Oh. Outside of that, if you're going on any longer rides, highly recommend taking some food and or water. It isn't really exercise around the thing, you get a bit of foot cramp and it's apparently maybe good for your core, but it's not really exercise. That being said, if you come off and have to walk carrying it for pretty much any length of time, these things are super heavy, so having some fuel to refuel yourself, carry it up those hills, is super nice. I did this at the weekend, it wasn't fun. That brings me to my third point. These things are pretty damn heavy. Pine X is 12 and a half kilograms, also known as almost two whole Louis. This guy isn't light, but he's very cute. And also, also known as 20% of my actual body weight. Yes, I'm a little weedy boy, don't mention it. What I'm getting at is they are not light and you notice it when you need to carry them for any more than a few minutes. I went away last weekend and took a great ride about the end. I had to walk across miles of fields that were walking only. And by the time I got to the other end, I was bathed in sweat and my arms had turned to jelly. Is it just because I'm a weak boy? Yes, but they're still heavy, okay? Just make sure you know your route and how much of it you're going to be able to ride as the last thing you want is a long, hard stretch of carrying the equivalent of a two-year-old child. Another thing about the way is that these things can be super dangerous if they come into contact with you, anyone else, anything, at any sort of speed. I've jumped off a few times and the board hit me in the shins or ankles and it's pretty agonizing since they're not exactly made of sponge. If you lose control and the board crashes into someone or something, it's going to cause damage. Always be responsible giving people and objects a very wide berth, especially when you're just getting started, as the last thing you want is a massive bill for smashing someone's car or shins. Side note, dogs seem to hate these things 50% of the time. Lou, for example, screams every time it's turned on and I get close to it, so if you're passing someone with a dog, go nice and slow to see how they react before just speeding past them because last thing you want is stressing out a dog, it comes to attack you, and then you're in a whole mess of situations. And that brings me to my fourth point, use your manners. Now, obviously I knew how to use my manners before I got one, you know, I'm English after all. But the specifics of it and the one wheel rules are sometimes hard to get your head around since there's such a new technology, especially in the UK. First of all, legality is, um, questionable, to say the least. All I'm going to say in this is that I've gone past a few police cars, I know a few police people, and none of them have said anything to me, but I also ride as respectfully as I can. If you just respect others using your path, then you can't really go wrong. So go onto the road to get past pedestrians, get off the road to allow cars to pass, get out of the way of cyclists, even if that means stopping. They have to pedal to accelerate. You don't. It's only fair. Slow it down when passing people and try to make it obvious where you are so they aren't scared. Check both directions on a path or road you're using regularly to make sure you're not getting in anyone's way. On roads, it can be easy to not hear cars coming up behind you with the wind in your ears. So keep an eye out at all times and use hand signals to tell drivers where you're going. This goes for indicating as well as waving them past if there's a safe place to do so. Basically, just be as polite as you possibly can and you should be fine. I've done quite a bit of cycling in the past, so I kind of treat it the same as I would that. I don't really have many problems. Now, some people are just assholes and will be mad at you no matter what you do. Personally, I've been beeped up from a car and also called a gay slur for some reason. But aside from that, most people are either indifferent or very interested. I've had the same number of people pull up their car or stop me and ask me what it is, if it's electric, how it works, and obviously I don't know how it works, I didn't build the thing. But people are interested in these sort of things equally as they are hateful of them. Some people might ask to have a turn and my answer is always going to be no. And the reason for this is, as I said, legality. As I said, legality is questionable, so if someone falls off this property and injures themselves, I feel like I could get thrown straight into the slammer. Friends and family, I explain the risks, tell them what to do, and I say, if you fall off, you're not going to sue me, right? That's fine. But anyone else, I'm sorry. 
you're just not having a go. And finally, we'll come to my fifth point, and this is you need to dress the part. When I was waiting for my one wheel, I went ahead and bought myself some new pads and a helmet to keep myself safe. And just like everything else, it's debated how much gear you should wear, but as someone who would like to remain alive with all my bones intact, I choose to get padded up, and you should too when you're learning. At the very least, wear a helmet, you can break most other things in your body and be okay, but your head is literally a cage that holds your brain, and that brain is easily damaged beyond repair, so keep it safe. As cool as you look riding without one, you won't look so cool when they're scraping you up off the pavement. I'd also recommend a pair of sunglasses, and it's not just for style points or even the sun. When you're going this fast, an insect in the air can launch itself into your eye and seriously throw you off, sometimes literally. Get yourself some eye protection in the form of sunglasses or even cycling glasses for darker weather. Outside of protection, it also matters what else you wear. Now, am I saying that you need to dress like a complete prat, like myself? No, I choose to do that so that people can see me coming. But you should dress in what I would call active clothing. This just means stuff that you can move around in so it's stretchy material that isn't going to restrict your movement. But wear is also pretty important. When I started, I was wearing a pair of really old skate shoes I'd had for over three years and one to absolute death. They were fine and comfortable, my feet could easily slip in and out of them, and the grip was a little bit compromised. I recently switched some slightly less worn-in high-top skate shoes, and they are so much better. The difference really is night and day, and I feel so much more secure on the board. All that's holding you onto this board is your feet, so make sure whatever you're wearing on them is up to the job. And lastly, you need to dress for the activity that you're doing. All this means is realise that whatever temperature it is when you're stood still outside, it can be a little bit colder when you're on the wheel. You know when you're going downhill on a bike and the air is rushing past, giving you a nice breeze? It's basically like that, but you're hardly doing any exercise, so you get cut fast if you're not doing a lot of carrying. Don't get me wrong, when it's super hot, you'll be fine in shorts. But in these videos when I'm wearing skins, it's not all that much colder than when I'm wearing shorts, but you really feel it when you get up to speed. And lastly, I know the video is called Five Things, but I really have one final bonus thing I wish I knew before I got my one wheel, and it is just how much I would love it. I used to skateboard a ton when I was younger, and when I was waiting on my wheel, I was getting back into that and remembering how great it makes me feel. The one wheel takes that feeling to the next level, allowing me to get out into nature, which I already love, but now with the incredible joy this vehicle brings. My mental health has honestly been leagues better since I've been riding, and I'm already dreading the winter months when it's going to be too wet outside to get a good ride in. The only regret I have about my purchase is that I didn't go for a GT, because I can easily see myself upgrading in future. But for now, I love my Pine X, and if you're even remotely interested in anything that you've seen about these things, I can pretty much personally guarantee that you will too. Thanks for watching.